I love fall winter gardening. It's my favorite time of year because out here in the desert, it's one of the best times to grow. Now, that being said, I've got my garden planted for fall winter and I can show you here. This is one of my beds. And then there's another one over there. I recently had a second bed installed to double my pleasure and grow more food. So with gardening, there's the thrill and of being able to cultivate plants and to be able to grow food. And it's really, really rewarding and it's very relaxing. However, when you're gardening, it goes without saying that you're going to have to deal with pests. So this lesson is coming straight from my collard greens. There's a pest that loves cruciferous vegetables and especially the leafy greens called a cabbage worm. And this, if you can see right here, this right here is a cabbage worm. And as you can see, this little guy is clinging for dear life onto this collard leaf. And he is eating, eating, eating. And what they do is they latch on to the collard leaf, or it could be a broccoli leaf or kale leaf and, or a cabbage leaf. They latch on and they just eat and eat and eat. And you can see where this side of the leaf has a lot of damage. And also on some of my other leaves, you can see where, um, I'll grab another one here. Say on this leaf right here, you can see that it has a lot of holes in it. And this is all damage that's caused by the cabbage worm. So what I do, there are different ways that you can deal with cabbage worms. So one thing is you can remove them manually. So in that case, I would reach onto the cabbage worm and you can see it's really funny because as soon as I grabbed him, you could just, I could hear this like little, I could feel, feel like I was ripping him away from the leaf. So that's how hard he's clinging to the leaf to eat and feed off of my crops. <laughs> So, and you can see him now, he's kind of dancing around on my garden glove. And so you can remove them manually. So that's one way of doing it. And you really do have to get rid of them because they will find another leaf to latch onto and they will eat, eat, eat. Even now he's trying to, he's inching around and he's trying to uh, find something to latch onto, find, find another leaf to feed off of. And you can see like the little, um, I guess it's like his little, teeth or whatever he uses to grip onto the leaf and then eat, 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 eat. So another way to get rid of them is by using um, moths, like decoy moths. So um, I've never tried that, but that's one of the things that I've, I've read and heard can be used to uh, get rid of the cabbage worms. And then a third thing is a neem spray like this one. And this spray, I made it up myself. It is a teaspoon, yeah, a teaspoon of pure organic cold pressed neem oil, along with, um, I think a half teaspoon, I use like Dr. Bronner's peppermint soap. And then I filled the bottle with water and I shake, shake, shake. You can spray. And then the cabbage worms and other pests like aphids and white flies don't like that. They don't like the neem. And so they will avoid it like the plague. So what can we learn from this little experience in the garden in growing food and dealing with pests? Oftentimes the narcissist can be like the cabbage worm. It, he or she, can latch on to a source of supply like this collard leaf and you know eat and eat and eat they will feed until they are either manually removed from the situation or the source or 
distracted, such as the decoy moth that distracts the cabbage worm and gets it away from the plants, or sprayed with something like the neem oil spray or some other kind of uh, some kind of other mixture that's uh, that doesn't taste good to them, that's repulsive to them. So sprayed with something that is repulsive to where they don't want to feed off the source anymore. So those are ways that the cabbage worm can be eradicated. However, if those things are not done, the cabbage worm is going to continue to do this, feed and feed and feed and feed off the source until there are holes left. And unchecked, the cabbage worm will eat until this is no more, until it's just a stem, literally. So this one still has a ways to go, but they will continue to eat unchecked until there's just nothing but stem left. Oftentimes the narcissist can behave in a, in a similar way to the cabbage worm. They can find their way onto, find their way to a host or find their way to a source, feed off of the source until they are either forcefully removed or distracted and taken in another direction through distraction or are put off by something repulsive that the host uh, applies to the situation and that causes them to detach and go elsewhere. I hope this lesson helps to illustrate how narcissists feed off of hosts and or how, how narcissists interact with their sources of supply. Gardening is also a great way to nurture life, which is encouraging and uplifting. It's also a great way to get the freshest possible food that you can get because you're literally taking it from your yard to your table. And it's not sitting on a truck for a long time or sitting in a store or in a warehouse for a long time. So there's that benefit as well. And it's also very relaxing. It's nice to be able to sit outside and enjoy some fresh air and to be able to just dig in the dirt and maybe put some music on and just be where it's relatively quiet and it's really a nice way to just calm down relax maybe on a weekend or at the end of a long day i wanted to put that out there as well um, as you go through maybe your recovery or as you decompress from maybe any stress that you may be experiencing or have experienced in your dealings uh, with narcissists and your experiences with narcissistic abuse recovery. Know that as long as there is supply, there will always be pests. It's all in the way that you handle the situation. Just know that you're not alone and you're not crazy. Know who you're dealing with, know who you are. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.